Hello everyone and welcome to back to Warren's Team Talk. I hope you're all well today and thank you so much for coming to see what I've got to offer um, to visit my channel. If you're new to the Warren's Team Talk, I want to give you an especially big warm welcome and hope that you enjoy your, your visit and that you find it interesting and informative as I do. All, I hope that happens for all of you. But there you go. Anyway, so I've come back today because I've got another exciting and hopefully interesting new video for you. Um, and this time it's episode 35 of England's most successful football club. And in this episode, I'm looking at Manchester City. Well, the Warrens team talk coach is ready and raring to go for our trip up to Manchester. But just before we go, um, I just want to remind you all that if you haven't done it so already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And please make sure that you pass the show on to anyone who you feel might enjoy it. Um, anyway, thanks for doing that. If you can, that's re that'd be really, really helpful. Anyway, so last thing to say is I hope you enjoy the show and let's get on with it. Okay, so here we are. We've arrived in Manchester. We've just pulled up outside the city of Manchester Stadium and we're going to pop in and say hello and have a chat and find out what we can about Manchester City. Now, they came sick in the Warrens team talk table and they managed to get 8,025 points. Now, Manchester City, let's find out a little bit about their history. So Man Manchester City, also known as the Citizens, the Sky Blues or the City, were formed in 1880 as a football section of a cricket club known as St Mark's Church of West Gorton. It became Ardwick Association Football Club in 1887 and Manchester City in 1894. The club's home ground is the Etihad Stadium in uh, East Manchester, um, not the city of Manchester Stadium as I called it. So apologies about that. Yeah, so it's, it is at the Etihad Stadium we're at. So we we're outside of and not the city of Manchester Stadium. So my apologies for that. I'm really sorry. Anyway, moving on. They moved to the Etihad Stadium in 2003, having played at Main, Main Road from 1923. Now, Manchester City did enter the Football League eight, in 1892 as Ardwick AFC and won their first major honour with the FA Cup in 1904. Now, Manchester City achieved their first success, like I said, when they reached the FA Cup final in 1904. And en route to the final, um, they defeated Sunderland by three goals to two away in the first round. And then Woolwich Arsenal again away 2-0 in the second round. Middlesbrough again 3-1 away in the third round after a replay when the first game played at Manchester City's Hyde Road ground, ended in a nil-nil draw. Um, the Wednesday, later to be known as Sheffield Wednesday, um, they defeated 3-0 in the semi-final, played at Everton's Goodison Park Stadium. Now, in the final, which was played at Crystal Palace's ground in London, the Crystal Palace ground in London, Manchester City defeated Bolton Wanderers by one goal to nil to claim their first ever piece of silverware since joining the Football League, thanks to a goal in the 23rd minute from their William, uh, forward William Henry Meredith. Despite the fact that Lancashire was such a football stronghold at the time, this was the first time that two sides from Lancashire had competed in the FA Cup final. It was alleged that up to 30,000 supporters from Lancashire descended from London for the final. And with nowhere to stay, many supporters were believed to have slept on the platform at Euston and St Pancras's railway station. After Manchester City took the lead in the 23rd minutes of the final from a goal from um, William Meredith, 
one particular overexcited Manchester City supporter invaded the pitch and he was led away by the police. But the boys in blue were so impressed by his, by his devotion to his team that they allowed him back into the crowd, which I find absolutely astonishing given, you know, the situation we have these days with people running on the pitch and whatnot. Um, yeah, the less said about that, the better. Anyway, so let's have a look at the rest of the successes that Manchester City have had throughout their illustrious history. So Manchester City have um, Manchester City have had a fair bit of success, it's fair to, I think it's fair to say. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to start off in the lowest league that they competed in and move up from there. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to look at um, their time in the Football League Second Division, Tier 3. Um, and they've only played in the third tier of English football of the English Football League uh, for one season, which was in the 1998-99 season when they finished third in the second division. When they finished 19 behind 19 points behind the second division tier three champions that season, Fulham, and they went on to win the promotion to they went on to win promotion to the first division tier two through the end of season second division playoff tournament after they defeated Gillingham by three goals to one on penalties after the final had ended 2-2 after extra time. Now, Manchester City have finished fourth in the second division tier two on just one occasion, which was in the 1983-1984 season when they again when they saw it, when they finished 18 points behind second division champions and 10 points behind third place Newcastle United. Um, and Newcastle United claimed the final promotion spot that season. So obviously Manchester City didn't get promoted. Um, the Citizens have finished third in the second division, tier two, on three occasions which were as follows. In the 1897-98 season, when they finished nine points behind second division champions Burnley and six points behind second place Newcastle United, who claimed the final spot for entry into the first and second division promotion um, stroke relegation test matches stroke playoffs depending on how you want to call it so again they missed out on promotion to newcastle united then in the 1926-27 season they finished eight points behind second division champions and equal on points with second place portsmouth but finished third by um virtue of the fact that Portsmouth had a superior goal average of just 0 .0, 0 0.006 of a goal. So obviously there you can see that the margin between the two clubs was minimal. In the 18, sorry, and then in 1984-85, the club finished 10 points behind second division champions, um, Oxford United. And this was enough to see Manchester City win promotion up to the first division tier one. And it Manchester City have finished second in the second division tier two on three occasions, which were as follows. In the 1895-96 season, when they finished equal on points with the second division champions, Liverpool. But Liverpool won the title because they had a goal average which was superior by 1.655 of a goal. But they missed out on promotion because they finished bottom of the end of season first and second division um, promotion stroke relegation test matches stroke playoffs table. 
And then in the 1950-51 season, Manchester City finished five points behind second division champions Preston North End. And this second place finish was the last promotion spot and the Citizens won promotion to the first division tier one. Then in the 1988-89 season, Manchester City finished 17 points behind second division champions Chelsea and claimed the final automatic promotion spot and were promoted to the first division tier one. Then in the 1999-2000 season, the club finished two points behind the second division champions uh, second Division Tier 2 champions Cholton Athletic and claimed the final promotion automatic promotion spot to win automatic promotion back to the First Division Tier 1. Right, now, so Manchester City have won seven Second Division Tier 2 titles in 1999 sorry, 1898-99 season, 1902-03 season, 1909-10 season, 1927-28, 1946-47, 1965-66, and 2001-2002 seasons. Now, if we look at these title, second division title successes, um, you'll be able to see that um, in the 1898-99 season, um, Glossop North End finished behind them in second spot and finished six points behind. Um, and then in the 1902-03 season, Small Heath, who would later be known as Birmingham City, uh, finished in second place behind Man City um, with three points behind. Oldham Athletic in the 1909-10 season finished one point behind them in second place. Um, in the 1927-28 season, Leeds United, Leeds United finished two points behind them in second place. And then in the 1946-47 season, Burley finished four points behind them in second place. And then in the 1965-66 season, Southampton finished five points behind them in, um, in the second division tier two. So, yeah, so there you go. There's a breakdown there as well of uh, the performance in the league that season for, Man for each of those seasons for Man City. So... That's quite interesting as well. Um, notable one there would be the 1927-28 season when they scored 100 goals. So that's quite good going, really. Right, so moving on. Now, if we, now we're going to um, also look at the first division tier two title victories. Uh, the only one they've had there is the 2001-2002 season when they finished 10 points ahead of West Bromwich Albion. And again, that season, they scored quite a phenomenal, phenomenal amount of goals when they scored 108 goals for, this, for the season. Then in, um, let's move on to the first tier now. And let's look at the first division tier one, fourth place finishes. That happened on five occasions. Um, the 1934-35 season, when they finished um, in fourth place, 10 points behind uh, the league champions Arsenal. The 1955-56 season, when they finished 14 points behind league champions Manchester United. 1971-72 season, when they finished fourth, but finished only one point behind um, the league champions, Derby County. 1977-78 season, 
when they finished 12 points behind the league champions Nottingham Forest. And then the 2015-16 season, which, um, sorry, shouldn't be there, that's Premier League um, campaign. They finished 15 points behind Leicester City. So yeah, as I said, in the 2015-16 season, they finished fourth in the FA Premier League, 15 points behind uh, Premier League champions Leicester City. Then moving on, um, we look now at their performance, third place finishes, and in the Football League th First Division, Tier 1, um, they finished two points behind Newcastle United in the 1904-1905 season. 1907-1908, they finished nine points behind Manchester United. And then 1929-30 season, they finished 13 points behind league champions Sheffield Wednesday. Now, for the Premier League Tier 1, they fit in third place finishes. They finished they finish twice in third place in the Premier League. In the 2010 11 season, they finish nine points behind Manchester United to finish third. And then in the 2016 2016 17 season, they finish 15 points behind the league champions Chelsea. <laughs> Now, if we go on now to look at the second place finishes in the first in tier one, um, in the Football League First Division, in the 1903-1904 season, they finished three points behind Sheffield Wednesday, um, five points behind league champions Burnley in the 1920-21 season, and then in the 1976-77 season. They finished one point behind Liverpool to claim the second place finish. Now, for the as far as the FA Premier League is concerned, um, in the 2012-2013 uh, season, they finished 11 points behind their city rivals Manchester United uh, to finish second. Uh, the 2014-15 season. They finished eight points behind Chelsea to finish second. And then in the 2019-20 season, they finished 18 points behind Liverpool um, to claim a runners-up spot. So, yeah, that's the second place finishes. So let's turn our attention to the title victories. Um, they've won the Football League First Division Tier 1 twice, which was in the 1936-37 season when they um, finished three points ahead of Charlton Athletic, who claimed the second place finish. And in 1967-68, again, they finished two points ahead of their city rivals, Manchester United, um, to claim the title. And United obviously got runners-up spot. Then, um, for the FA Premier League, so far they've won uh, the league title on four occasions. Um, the 2011-12 season, when they won the league title um, by defeating... Um, by finishing ahead of Manchester United. Um, and they there was no points difference between the two of them. Um, so I'm pretty sure that they were separated by goal difference. Then in the 2013-14 season, um, they finished two points ahead of Liverpool to win the FA Premier League. And then in the 2017-18 season, they finished 19 points ahead of their city rivals, um, Manchester United, to win the Premier League. And then finally in 2018, 
2019 season, they finished just a solitary point ahead of uh, Liverpool um, by one point. So, and they massed 98 points that, that season. Um, so, yeah, that's quite interesting. Now, so, yeah, the 2011-12 um, season, um, in the 2011, to, hold on just a sec. Yeah, in the 2011-12 season, um, Manchester City and Manchester United finished the season equal on 89 points. And City won the Premier League Tier 1 title by virtue of the fact they had an eight goal, an eight goal superior goal difference um, to Man United, who had a goal difference of plus 56 and City had a goal difference of plus 64 so that clears that one up um so moving on and we're going to look at Manchester City's domestic cup success now um And we're going to do, the first thing we'll do is look at the Football League Cup. Now, they've been runners-up in the Football League Cup once when they be, were runners-up to Wolverhampton Wanderers um, at Wembley Stadium in front of 97,000, um, well, just over 97,000 people and in 1974 when they lost by two goals to one. Now, I believe, I'm not sure, but I think that's the day when, I think they were managed by Malcolm Allison at the time and he walked out onto the Wembley pitch wearing a rather outlandish hat, but I might be wrong about that. So, I'm apologies if I'm wrong. Anyway, Manchester City um, Football League Cup uh, victories. I mean, they've won the League Cup quite a lot in recent years, but let's just go through them anyway. In 1970, West they defeated West Brom by two goals to one at Wembley Stadium with just over 97,000 people in attendance. Again, in 1976, they defeated Newcastle by two goals to one with a capacity crowd in front of a capacity crowd of 100,000. Then in 2014, they defeated by Sunderland by three goals to one, again at Wembley. All these victories, by the way, are all at Wembley Stadium um, in front of a crowd of over 84,000. And then in 2016, they drew one all with Liverpool, but won the League Cup 3-1 on penalties. Um, in front of a crowd of over 86,000. And two years later, in 2018, they won the League Cup final comfortably by three goals to nil um, against Arsenal. And then a year later, they defeated Chelsea 4-3 on penalties. And then the year later after that, they won their third League Cup in succession when they defeated Aston Villa by two goals to one. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, this season they also defeated Tottenham Hotspur as well to win the League Cup. But the reason that's not on here is because it happened after I compiled all the statistics um, and data to, be able to allow me to do um, this series. So in fairness to all the other clubs that have had um, cup successes or league successes um, this current season I've not included any of them so but like I said uh, in a past episode and when I finish the series I'm going to produce an up-to-dated league table which includes all the data from this current season in it okay so that should be quite interesting Then the runners-up 
in the FA Cup now. Let's look at the FA Cup. They've been runner-up in the FA Cup on five occasions. In the 1925-26 season, they lost by one goal to nil at Bolton Wanderers, again at Wembley Stadium, and again all of these, um, all of these um, runners-up performances were all took place at Wembley. All right. So in 1932-33, they lost three 0 to Everton. Um, 1954-55, they lost 3-0, uh, sorry, 3-1 to Newcastle United. And then in the 1980-81 season, um, they lost 3-2 to Tottenham Hotspur after a replay. Um, I remember both of the games. I remember the first game and Ian Hutchinson scoring um, a really fluky own goal. Um, well, I was fluky in my opinion, but yeah, he scored a fluky own goal to win Manchester City a replay. But then in the replay, Tottenham's Ricky Villa scored an absolute wonder goal to, which helped Tottenham to win the game by three goals to two. And then in the 2012-13 season, Wigan won um, they lost 1-0 to Wigan Athletic. And sadly, that season, Wigan Athletic were relegated out of the Premier League. Then, FA Cup final victories. They've so far won, won the FA Cup on six occasions. Um, in the 1903-1904 season, they defeated Bolton by one goal to nil at the Crystal Palace Stadium in London in front of a crowd of over 61,000 people, as we saw at the beginning of the show. And then in the 1933-34 season, they defeated Portsmouth by two goals to one at Wembley Stadium in front of a crowd of over just over 93,000. Then in the 1955-56 season, they won, they defeated Birmingham City by three goals to one, again at Wembley Stadium in front of a capacity of 100,000 crowd. And then in the 1968-69 season, they defeated Leicester City by one goal to nil, again at Wembley Stadium and again in front of a capacity crowd of 100,000. Then in the 2010-11 season, they defeated Stoke City by one goal to nil, again at Wembley Stadium in front of a crowd of uh, just over 88,000. And then in the 2018-19 season, they inflicted a heavy defeat of six goals to nil um, at Wembley Stadium, again in front of a crowd of over 85,000 people. And that 6-0 victory equaled a record that had been set by Berry, who also won 6-0 in a cup final. So, um, yeah, that must have been a bit of an awful experience for the mid anyone has anything to do with Watford. But there you go. Then... Manchester City, in the Charity Shield, um, Manchester City have been runners-up on six occasions in the Charity Shield. Um, they lost 4-0 to Arsenal in the 1934 season at Arsenal's Highbury Stadium. And then in 1956, they lost 1-0 to local rivals Manchester United at their main road, Manchester Stadium. In the 1969 season, they lost 2-1 to Leeds United, Ellen Road, Leeds. Um, in the 1973 season, they lost 1-0 to Burnley um, at Main Road, their Main Road um, Stadium in Manchester. And then they defeated in 2011, 
Um, they lost 3-2 to, again to Manchester United, but this time at Wembley Stadium. And then in the 2014 season, they lost by three goals to nil to Arsenal, again at Wembley Stadium in front of a crowd of just over 71,000. And then they again, they've won the uh, FA Charity Shield a total of six times. Um, when they in 1937, when they def defeated Sunderland by two goals to nil at Main Road, um, in 1968, when they defeated West Bromwich Albion 6 1 again at Main Road, in 1972, when they defeated Aston Villa 1 0 at and Villa Park in Birmingham, in 2012. Um, they defeated Chelsea by three goals to two, again at Villa Park in Birmingham. And then in 2018-19, they defeated Chelsea by two goals for nil um, at Wembley Stadium. Um, and then in 2019, they defeated Liverpool five foreign penalties after the game. It ended on a 1 1 draw after extra time again at Wembley Stadium. So that's the Charity Shield. Now let's have a look at the European record. Now, so far they've won one European trophy. Um, that may change in a few weeks when um, they compete in the Champions League final against Chelsea, but we'll have to see about that, see what happens. Now, they won the Cup Winners' Cup in the 1969-70 season when they defeated a team from Poland by the name of Gornik Zabrzy. I think that's how you say the name, but I'm not sure. So apologies for my pronunciation because I've probably got it really badly wrong. Um, they lost by two goals to one at the Pratar Stadium in Vienna in Austria in front of just under 8,000 people. Now, Manchester, let's look at Manchester City's best um, league performances. Now, um, what I did for this, I compared all their performances in the league, and I did this because during the history of league football in England, there was a period when two points for a win were given, and then, and then after that, it changed to three points for a win. So what I did was I converted all the seasons where they had two points to win to three points to win, so I could compare them. And their best performances have come in my opinion, in the 2017-18 season, um, when they when they managed to get 100 points um, and scored 106 goals, and then in the 2001-2002 season, when in the first division tier two, they managed to get 99 points and finished first. And then in the 2018-19 season, um, when they won the Premier League Tier 1 title with 98 points and finished first, obviously. So just to recap, in the 2017-18 season, they finished first with 100 points. Um, so yeah, and they did. They've done had some really good perform, strong performances um, in recent years um, since the Arab money came to the club. So they've done really, really well and invested that money really wisely and um, made this club into probably one of the best in the world at the current time. Okay, so let's move on now and look at. Manchester City's other notable achievements. And for me, there's three real key ones here. Um, under the management of Pep Guardiola, they won the Premier League in 2018, and it meant that they became the only Premier League team 
to attain 100 points in a single season. In 2019, they won four trophies, um, completing an unprecedented sweep of all domestic trophies in England and becoming the first England English men's team to win the domestic treble. In the 1969-70 season, Manchester City won the League Cup and European Cup Winners' Cup and so became um, only the second English team to win a European trophy and a domestic trophy in the same season. Now, this is an all-time Manchester City 11 that I found on the um, one football website, um, which I managed, like I say, I managed to find this on the one football website. Um, and it's quite an interesting one, really. It was written or put together by a chap called Dan Burke. Um, I'm not sure who he is, but I've got a feeling he might be a journalist for one football. Anyway, so let's look at his team. Now, his team, in goal, he put Bert Troutman. Uh, Bert Troutman was a German uh, prisoner of war, and he ended up playing for Manchester City. And he famously broke his neck in a cup final, um, but decided that he wanted to play on. Um, so he put in a bit of a heroic performance on that day for Manchester City. And then centre-back pairing of Americ Laporte and Vincent Company. And then a left-back by the name of Glyn Pardew, who I don't really know anything about. I don't know who he is. I don't remember him. Um, Pablo Sabaleta was the right-back. And then in midfield, um, he went with Yaya Toure, David Silva and Colin Bell. And then up front, he went with a chap by the name of Tommy Johnson, Sergio Aguero, and Eric, Eric Brook. So that's his um, all-time 11. What, what's your thoughts about that 11? Would you go with that, or would you have different people? Are there players that play for City that you think should be in that team? Um, yeah, put your comments or your opinions about that team, please, in the comment section of the video. That would be quite interesting to read. And also, if you've got an all-time Man City 11 of your own that you'd like to put in there, please feel free to do that as well. That would be great. Um, anyway, so, yeah, I hope you found that interesting. Um, so, yeah, that's the Manchester City story. Well, okay, sadly, everyone, that's it for today. It's the end of the show. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and found it interesting. As I said in the video, please, if you have any greatest ever Manchester City all-time 11s, please put them in the comments section of the video, as well as any other comments or stories that you might have about Manchester City. That would be amazing. But please, before you go, if you haven't done it already, please put a like on the video and please subscribe to my channel and also pass on the um, episode on to any of your friends or family or anyone that you know who you think might be interested in watching it. And remember, all of this is completely free and it'll only take you a second to do it. So hopefully, anyway, I hope it helps keep you entertained. Um, and just to let you know, I'll be back again on Wednesday with the next episode for you. So I hope you enjoy that one as well. But more importantly than any of that, please remember that to look after each other and please remember to try and share some love and kindness around the world and joy and happiness as well. And remember, please, please keep talking. Anyway, I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, everyone. Bye.